dear Pastor Jerry and Toby and all my wonderful, wonderful Canadian brothers and sisters over there in Moncton and uh, St. John. Love you guys so much. You know, amazingly, of course, we're on the other side of the world. We are coming into our spring. So looking forward to summer. And you guys are going into fall and then into winter. That snow's going to come back. I know you've had a great summer. But uh, I know you kind of start the year differently from us. And at the beginning of the year, I laid out the vision for City Impact Churches in relation to going fishing. Going fishing. Well, of course, you've got some great salmon up there in Canada and some great fishing. But I'm not talking about fishing in the natural. I'm talking about where Jesus said, come follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Of course, it's in the following we get made. But fishers of men, how important it is to go fishing for the souls of men and women. And, uh, you know, I don't know if, if there's anything more important. I often say if any church is not saving souls, it do doesn't deserve space on the planet. And there's really only a couple of things that, that uh, City Impact Church is all about. Number one, obviously glorifying God. So important. The church is all about Him. The church is about God and people, right? And so number two is building people into Christ-likeness, building people into Christ-likeness. In other words, we all need to grow. We all need to bear more forth fruit. And as we walk with God and, uh, you know, obviously in His Word and in church, we grow into the likeness of Christ. We overcome all the things that, that do, unfortunately, overcome other people. And number three, of course, is a winning of souls, the evangelizing of the world. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. And I know Pastor Jerry, obviously, like myself, carries a real heart to reach out to people and see them one for Christ. But listen, it shouldn't just come from the front, and I know it doesn't. You know, the church is not about... Um, you know, the, 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 the ministry and the laity, that's an abomination. We're all in the ministry. We're all, hallelujah, called uh, to share the gospel. The Bible says, be ready in season and out of season to share the hope that is within you. And so it's opportunities just as we go about our everyday business, going to work or in our neighborhoods. And just as the opportunity comes up to bring God into the conversation or to share a good deed with somebody. And so it's both in deed and in word, right? And are just able to reach out. And so fishing for the souls of men and women. We can use different bait. I know that different ways, our community days, obviously. And we can use a bigger net at times, but one-on-one -on -one fishing as well. Obviously, at the moment, under COVID, uh, different, different times being locked down, we've been using the net, literally. Uh, but enough to say, I know you know what I'm talking about. So can I just encourage you? In relation to this message about let's go fishing, I'd love you to really uh, listen up and not just be hearers of the word, but doers of the word. We're winning souls here in New Zealand, and I know in all our mission campuses around the world and over there in Canada as well. You're on my heart. I pray uh, for you daily. I pray for, uh, obviously, your pastors, Pastor Jerry and Toby, and I love Curtis and Shannon and, and Bev, and, and just got such a great relationship, and Tim and Alicia and others there. I love you so much, and I look forward to the day when we can travel again and get back to Canada, and I look forward to the day, obviously, for Global Impact, and many of you coming from Canada out here to our Global Impact Conference. Our theme this year was going to be all about this, and of course, it hasn't happened, but that doesn't mean to say that we can't be fishing uh, while this whole world is in this most interesting season. Where it will all land, who knows? But until Jesus returns, let's be fishers of men. So God bless you. Uh, I hope and pray you enjoy this message. And I know that sometimes as I, as I broadcast messages and whether it's on our Facebook or whether it's on our web or whether it's in church playing our messages, whatever it is, it's always there for you. It's always available for you. We love you guys so much and want to impart and, and encourage and, and be a blessing to you. That's what we're here for, to be a blessing to the church here in Canada. And so God bless you. Love you much. And I hope and pray that you pray for us as well. And I want to be a fisher of man. How about you? Well, good morning, church. Good morning, all campuses. Hey, it's so good to have you with us today. Just so great to be able to gather together, to pray, to seek God, and to believe God. And, you know, we've got the prayer wall all happening here. I know we've got prayer walls down in other campuses, people putting in their prayer requests, people putting in their praise reports. 
And uh, I just want to say how thrilled I am as your pastor to know people are praying, people are believing, people are seeing the promises. But I want to tell you, we're going to have a great day today. And I'm so excited about that, which I've got to share and want to share with you all. And so just want to say thank you for coming to church. Uh, you're so looking, so awesomely people. And I know right throughout all the campuses, throughout the whole world, uh, as we tune into this and just listen and, and uh, take it to heart. And I pray and hope, just like in the book of Habakkuk that we're going to look at, that uh, the vision will be plain, it will be clear. And so when you hear, hear it, you'll be able to run with it. Can I hear an amen? So let me open in prayer and let's believe God today. Father, I just want to thank you for 38 years. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your overwhelming, just abundance, oh God, over the years. Your faithfulness, Lord. You are Jehovah Jireh, our supplier. And Father, oh God, we just want to thank you, oh God, that you are not only our supplier, our provider, but you are our healer. You are our salvation. You are everything. And oh God, I just pray over the service today that you would inspire people. You would captivate hearts, captivate my heart afresh, oh God. And I pray, oh God, that people, all of us, would run afresh, Lord. The Bible declares, they who wait upon the Lord shall mount up with wings like eagle. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not grow faint. And so, oh God, I pray blessing over every person, whether they've been here six months, six days, or six years, or, or 28 years, or 38 years, I pray your blessing over them in the wonderful name of Jesus. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Well, I just want to talk for a brief moment, if I can, about that prophet named Habakkuk. I mean, what a name. I don't hear too many kids being called that today, but he was one of the minor prophets. And you know, it really, it's only three chapters, three chapters, a very short book, and yet it's an amazing book, and it tells us so much. To be honest, I know John Maxwell entitled it this, Leadership with No Easy Answers. Leadership with No Easy Answers. Why? Because he was a man of God living in troubled times. You know, around the earth today, of course, we've got some troubled times among us, but Habakkuk asked some big questions. And I know that there'll be people here who've asked these same questions, and maybe your friends did, maybe your family did. But you know, his questions are, Lord, why do the wicked prosper? That's a good question, isn't it? Why do the wicked prosper? Then he asked another question, God, if you're God, why don't you do something about it? <laughs> Hello? Have you ever asked that question? I'm sure you have. And then, of course, he said, with all going on in the world, where are you, God, in all of this? Where are you, God, in all of this? And, uh, you know, in these three short chapters, he starts out standing before the Lord, asking these questions. But then in chapter 3, we find him kneeling before the Lord. He came to that place of worship. In other words, in chapter 1, you see the burden of Habakkuk. Number 2, you see a vision that he got from heaven. And number 3, the result of the vision was that he worshipped God. And I hope and pray that you come to that place today. You know, in three short chapters, he who was once perplexed was now at peace. He who was once confused is now contented. He who was once fearful, hallelujah, is now full of faith. Amen. And so he comes to the place where he trusts in the Lord with all his heart. He does not lean on his own understanding. Amen. In fact, uh, he ends up in chapter 3, verse 17, singing, Though the fig tree should not blossom, there be no fruit on the vine, so the yield of the olive should fail, and the fields produce no food. Though the flock should be cut off from the fold, and there be no cattle in the stalls, yet, yet, I will exult in the Lord. I will rejoice. I will rejoice in the God of my salvation. Would you say that word with me this morning? Salvation, salvation. Wow. You know, I, I know you may be thinking, well, Peter, what's this got to do with Vision Sunday? What's this got to do with let's go fishing? You can see it all around me. What's this got to do with, as I preached last week about being fruitful, and Krista preached so well the week before that about bearing fruit? You know, what's this got to do with it? Well, as I mentioned, what changed Habakkuk from chapter 1 to chapter 3 was he received fresh vision. Hallelujah. It was vision that brought Habakkuk to that place in chapter 2. And it says here, Then the Lord answered me after those questions that Habakkuk answered and said, The Lord answered me and said, Record the vision, inscribe it on tablets, so that the one who reads it may run. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. It hastens towards a goal. It will not fail. Though it tarries, 
wait for it, for it will certainly come, it will not delay. And you might be saying, well, what was the vision? What was the vision that Habakkuk got? Well, in chapter 2, verse 14, it says, For the whole earth, there's a vision, for the whole earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of God as the waters cover the sea. His glory, chapter 3, verse 3 says, covers the heavens and the earth is full of His praise. Verse 13, you went forth with the sal- for the salvation of your people, for the salvation of your anointed. Think about that. Think about that word salvation. You've heard me say it before. Salvation means improvement of life. It means, of course, we could talk about revival. We could talk about people being saved and going to heaven. And I know coming through COVID, I know people have been troubled. I know people, some have lost their jobs. I know businesses that are doing it hard. And you might say, well, my life is improving. Friend, you've got to see the big picture. You've got to see the whole picture. Amen. You've got to think about how far you've come. Where were you before you got saved to where you are now? We'll talk about it. But just so you know this, my friend, to give you some thought today, more people, more people will be drawn to Christ through your life when they see Jesus in your life in the tough times than when you share Christ in the good times. And even though we don't like going through tough times, I tell you now, if you hold your testimony, hold your faith, and rejoice in the Lord always, people go, wow, how can he go through that and still praise the Lord? Amen. You know, when you think about tough times, I uh, think about famines. There are 13 famines in the Bible, some big, some small, and we're going to be looking at one of those famines very shortly. Of course, the wonderful thing is they all had one thing in common. What was that? Well, they all came to an end. And no matter what season you're in now, my friend, I tell you, it will come to pass. Hallelujah. And, uh, you know, you've got to think about summer and winter and autumn and spring and so forth. It shall surely come to pass. As long as the earth remains, there'll be seed time and harvest. And so you might be in chapter one. I understand that. You may not be able to see it, just like Habakkuk couldn't see it in chapter one. But my prayer today, my friend, is that you will grasp the burden of the Lord. Hallelujah. That Isaiah speaks about, that the psalmist speaks about, the vision that God has for this earth, this country, New Zealand, Aotearoa, this city, your family, your neighbors, your, 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 your town, wherever you are, your work colleagues, the vision that God has, because it starts off in chapter 1, verse 1, the burden of the prophet Habakkuk. And I know people get burdened, and I hope and pray that you're burdened for souls. I hope and pray you're burdened for your family. I hope and pray that you're burdened for your work colleagues. Amen. And God responds in verse 5. I love this. Look among the nations. Look among the nations. Observe, be astonished, wonder, because I am doing something in your days you would not believe if it were told you. You know, Habakkuk, of course, lived thousands of years ago in different days. But, you know, this word, I believe, to some degree is being fulfilled today. We live in amazing days. I mean, I don't know whether you realize it or not, but six months ago, only six months ago, we heard for the first time the words coronavirus. Six months ago. And look how the world has changed. If we were told, we wouldn't have believed it, that every country would be closed from traveling and and stores would be closed and we'd all be locked up in our homes. Who would have believed it, right? Major things happened. The major things are happening. You know, lootings and riots and statues and disbanding the police. I don't know whether you know, but in Seattle, they got what they call this love summer zone. It's called the chop zone. And, uh, you know, they want to disband the police. But do you know they've had over four fatal shootings? They've had lots of shootings, fatal shootings in that zone, in that so-called love zone. They've had dozens of shootings in Chicago. I mean, it's just ridiculous, really. But major conflicts across the earth in Syria, Hong Kong, Korea, Israel. Do I need to go on today? We live in incredible times. No two ways about that. We've got to wake up and wonder. We've got to wake up and look. In Second Kings, where we go to right now, in the story of the famine, you know, I tell you right now, if you were in some countries, there is this sort of famine that's happening right now to some people. And it's not good, I know. But the thing is, is that God says, I'm doing something in your days that you would not believe it if you were told. So be astonished and wonder. Let's go to 2 Kings chapter 6 and chapter 7. And we have an incredible story. And I know a lot of you'd be familiar with this story. The nation, uh, the people of God, Israel had turned their backs on God, just like our nations have done today across the board. 
And uh, God had warned them what would happen if they did, that there would be famines, there'd be pestilence, there'd be war and so forth. So let's read chapter 6 uh, and verse 24. It came about after this that Benadad, king of Aram, gathered all his army and went and besieged Samaria. There was a great famine in Samaria, and behold, they besieged it until a donkey's head was sold for 80 shekels of silver and a fourth of cab of dubs dung for five shekels of silver. You think about that, what they were eating, what they were cooking on, and so forth, so forth. So let's pick up chapter 7, verse 1. Then Elisha said, Listen to the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord, Tomorrow about this time a measure of fine flour will be sold for a shekel and two measures of barley for a shekel. In other words, the abundance would come. The abundance would come in one day. And the royal officer whose hand the king was leaning on answered the man of God and said, Behold, if the Lord should make windows of heaven, could this thing be exactly like Habakkuk? You know, look and be astonished. If I, you know, even if I told you what I was doing, God says, you'd not believe it. And here was this man. He couldn't, he couldn't see what the word of the Lord was. And Elisha said, Behold, you'll see it with your own eyes, but you'll not eat of it. That's what happens to cynical people, right? But verse 3, there were four leprous men, leprous men at the entrance of the gate. They said to one another, why do we sit here until we die? If we say we'll enter the city, then the famine in the city, we will die there. If we sit here, we will die also. Not a great outlook. Now, therefore, come, let us go over to the camp of the Arameans. If they spare us, we will live. If they kill us, we will but die. A great future for these guys. And they arose at twilight to go to the camp of the Arameans. And when they came to the outskirts of the camp of the Arameans, behold, there was no one there. For the Lord had caused the army of the Arameans to hear a sound of chariots and a sound of horses, even the sound of a great army. So they said to one another, Behold, the king of Israel has hired against us the king of Hittites and the king of the Egyptians to come upon us. Therefore they arose and fled in the twilight, left their tents and their horses, their donkeys, even their camp, just as it was, and fled for their life. Verse 8. When these lepers came to the outskirts of the camp, they entered one tent and ate and drank, carried from there silver, gold, and clothes. Silver, gold, and clothes. Silver, gold, and clothes. They went and hid them, and they returned and in another tent, carried there also, and went and hid them. Then they said to one another, We are not doing right, for this is a day of good news, but we are keeping silent. We are keeping silent. You know, my friend, from the Old Testament to the New Testament, I've been going on over it over and over again, first in the natural, then in the spiritual. And we need to understand types and shadows. You know, leaven, of course, Jesus said, is sin, right? Leaven, they put in bread to make it rise. But Jesus said, beware the leaven of the Pharisees. Frankincense is prayer. Salt is grace. The Bible says, let our speech be seasoned with grace as of salt. You know, and so everything's got a type to it. Gold is faith. Let your faith be tried as gold in the fire. Silver is the price of redemption. Lepers basically represent sin, represent sin. And so these sinners, if you like, or these three lepers had, had uh, sorry, had three options. They had three, there were four of them, they had three options. All the options were bad, and it's a little bit like sinners today. Friends, your options, you think you can buy your way to heaven. You can't buy your way to heaven. You can't work your way to heaven. You can't be good enough to go to heaven, right? The outlook was all bad. But hallelujah, God loves sinners. And He has a plan. He has a life for you. And uh, He has a life for me, a life for you. And He had a plan in sending Jesus. Hallelujah. And I know and I understand you've got to repent. You've got to leave your sin behind. You've got to leave your comfort zone, right? You've got to cross the line. Hallelujah. But the Lord has been at work. And after a seven-year famine, and one day, and one day, and one day, it turned around. And, and I asked the question, you know, I can remember when my life turned around. What about your life? When did it turn around for you in finding Jesus? What difference has He made in your life? You know, I didn't say you don't go through uh, some tough times like I mentioned before. But I tell you, you come through those things and the joy of the Lord is your strength, right? And I wonder if you can get an understanding this morning that he who knew no sin took our sin upon himself. 
took our leprosy, if you like, upon himself. I wonder if you realize that he went before into your enemy camp, hallelujah, and scattered them, making a mockery of them, triumphing over them. He took back the keys of hell and death. You know, because that's what leprosy brings. Sin brings death. The wages of sin is death. I wonder if you realize this morning that Jesus made a way for you to take back what the enemy has stolen from you. Hallelujah. So when the enemy comes to rob, kill, and destroy, Jesus said, I've come to bring you life and life more abundantly. So when you realize what God has done for you, I wonder if you have discovered the joy of the Lord, the treasures, the food, the gold, the silver, the garments. What am I talking about this morning? Well, the treasure. You know, talks. Jesus said the true treasure of heaven is the fruit and the gifts of the Spirit. Have you discovered the fruit and the gifts of the Spirit? They discovered gold, gold, faith, hallelujah. Ah, by, we overcome the world. This is our faith, praise God. Gold, silver, redemption, the price that bought us. We've been redeemed, hallelujah. Garments, garments of righteousness. You know, these things are ours in Christ Jesus. We've got them, hallelujah. The enemy had them, but now we've got them back. And if you have discovered them, my friend, I wonder then if you take the words of, on the, these holy pages to heart this morning. In verse 9, the lepers said to one another, we are not doing right. This is a day of good news, but we are keeping silent. Now, therefore, come and let us tell the king's household. And so this has all got to do with let's go fishing. This is the vision for 2020. When I pioneered City Impact Church, my first business card, if you like, had a, had a net on it with, with, with a guy casting a net and, into the fishing. One of the, the scriptures we got to come up here from, onto East Coast Road from down in Browns Bay was cast the net on the other side. In fact, I used to have a picture in the boardroom. I bought it down in Devonport, and it had all these fish jumping into the net. And, uh, you know, it's been a theme of ours for 38 years. Jesus said, come follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Hallelujah. He hasn't stopped doing that. And so when I think about fishing, and first in the natural, then in the spiritual, obviously there's a variety of ways to fish. I mean, we can fish individually. We can fish collectively. You either can use a hook and a line and a sinker, or you can have a float. I mean, you can use a net. We had to use a net, of course, in, this, in the spiritual in relation to COVID. But you can fish from the shore. You can fish from the wharf. You can fish in a dinghy. You can fish on a jet ski or go out on a trawler, you know. But however or wherever, this is a day of good news. And so when I think about City Impact Church and I think about us fishing together, I think about our community days. What an opportunity we have to go fishing together, to get out there and just serve our community, love on people. What an opportunity together to make a difference in somebody's life. That is going fishing, right? I mean, we are here to help. We are here to help. When I think about that, I just want to read a letter. We started this in relation to our campaign under, under COVID because people were suffering. People needed meals. People needed help. And I've got this letter before we look at the statistics. Have a listen to this, and, and uh, this is from a Tongan lady. I won't mention her name, but she's 47 years of age. She's got two kids, nine and a three-year-old, living in, in Panama Road out of Mount Wellington. And she writes, I just want to say thank you so much from the bottom of my heart for all the help that you've given me and my family during lockdown. I received two weeks ago some shopping and some blankets from your church. I was so blessed that you gave a help to us during this difficult time and it really is helpful for me and my family. Thank you so much. I was sick for almost a month. My husband was working in Kaikoura, and my oldest son is the only one who could look after me. He's nine. My family and friend don't want, friends don't want to come to help because they thought I might have coronavirus, but I was tested negative two times. During that time, we have had little food, but what can we do? We just have our faith in the Lord that He will look after us. When I was in bed one day, the only thing that came to mind was that I'm going to die. Doesn't that sound like the leper at the gate to you? But my mind was so sad. If I die, who will look after my kids? I opened my Bible and read uh, Samuel 27, 3 to 4, and it gave me strength. And one day a lady uh, called me from City Impact Church. I presume that was Mary Kath, and wanted to help. Thank God that he answered my prayer. Thank you for being there for me when I need help. May God bless you all for all you've done and also for other people that need your help. 
Isn't that a wonderful letter? I mean, if that doesn't touch your heart, friend, you need to get saved this morning. I mean, just to be able to help people like this and people who seemingly got no, no hope, no, no way out, you know, just to be part of that. You know, we've got some stats. They come up on the screen. But this is what we did under, uh, under lockdown and, and uh, furthering on. You know, we've delivered over 2,000 frozen cooked meals. Well, uh, yeah, cooked meals. I hope they weren't just frozen. <laughs> they thawed out. To the most vulnerable in the community. We delivered over 1,000 bags of groceries and fresh vegetables. Uh, we've collected and delivered in the community over 1,200 blankets and over 1,000 pair of pajamas. Oh, man, come on. Somebody needs to give the Lord a big shout. Over 600 families, the most vulnerable of vulnerable, and that's who we get on our books, um, have been recipients of those. And I just want to say, well done, City Impact Church. You're absolutely amazing. What a blessing that is right throughout New Zealand. What a blessing it is to be part of going fishing campaign, collectively doing something together. You know, I know the pantry is still going, helping people in our, in our own congregations, people that are suffering, people that need food and so forth. And uh, the pantry is, is different to the We Are Help campaign. And, but both of them are so, so vital. You know, when I think about collectively, I want to encourage you. You know, we've got uh, Simon Cornwall in the church who's involved in prison ministry, does a fantastic job. You know, people th often say, well, what can I do? What can I do? Well, you can go and visit the prison. You know, Jesus talked about it, right? And uh, support Simon and get him behind him. And Di Willis working with the uh, Christian disabled. What an opportunity to go and help people that are disadvantaged, more disadvantaged than you, and just to be part of something, you know, and just to go fishing and, and, and reach out to people. I think about our mission campuses, and I, and I receive letters from our mission campuses, just, just the incredible um, difference that we make in the children's homes, the sponsorships, and so forth, so forth. You know, the Sunday uh, services, of course, are opportunities, the special events throughout the years. These are ways we can go fishing collectively, collectively, collectively we went, went fishing, collectively we went fishing out of botany, right? I mean, did we not plan a campus just one year ago? One year ago, just, just this last week, it's gone on, I think on the 28th. And, uh, you know, um, uh, a couple of photos on the screen, but Sammy and Ben, pastors Sammy and Ben, right in. And they've had over conservatively, conservatively, 76 decisions. Now, you've got to remember, they've been locked down and locked out for some of that period, which is incredible. Um, you know, they, they've got, they had 118 people in the service last week. They've got 161 in the church out there. I mean, you know, this is a new campus just being planted. Hallelujah. And I just want to say, well done, all you people out there in Botany. I'm believing for you and believing God for great growth and, and all that. It's just absolutely wonderful. And uh, not only did we, you know, when I think about the visual five, going fishing. This is all about going fishing, right? I mean, you know, when I think about uh, the visual five that we launched last year, we've now got a kid's YouTube channel because what happened was, you know, under lockdown, we took our kid's church to a whole nother level. And out of that, they've made these five-minute segments that are being released on YouTube uh, because that's the way kids are watching television these days. And I, I want to play you one right now just to give you some idea of what's out there for your kids and for your neighbor's kids and your neighbor's neighbor's kids. And if you can get this talking throughout the schools and not only right throughout the whole nation, but even around the world, hallelujah, this, I believe, uh, we've, got the, we've got the best kids online church that I've seen. And, uh, you know, I just want to say to you, well done, Pastor Maria. And, of course, the whole team, just an incredible job. But check out this kids YouTube clip. This is happening right now. Hallelujah. We're launching a YouTube channel for kids. We are super excited to release all the fun clips we've created over lockdown, as well as new videos that will be shared all the time. Our channel is super fun and about the Bible, but also a safe place for kids to visit and search up their favorite characters. Search City Impact Church Kids on YouTube to get watching and sharing. You gotta admit that is pretty good. That's pretty hot, right? And we got some incredible talent, some incredible kids, and of course all our 
uh, our creative people and all audio visual people who work in all the departments in the church. I just want to say so proud of you. This is all about going fishing. This is all about reaching out. I mean, it's great entertainment for church kids, but this is also about reaching out and going fishing. Amen. The other thing is, you know, under the Visual 5 that we launched last year uh, and which we have uh, accomplished also this year, not only the Kids YouTube channel, not only another campus, but also our legacy project, our legacy project. We've now got over 30 sessions, uh, plus, of course, all the marriage courses. Don't forget, if you want to watch those, they're awesome. But over 30 sessions, and we're just putting them more and more up all the time in relation to some great teaching on the feasts and the tabernacles and different things. And you're welcome to check it out on our, on our website. And you can share this with your friends. Share it with somebody. Hallelujah. And so not only we got the legacy and the YouTube and the new campus, uh, but we've also got... Obviously, our online campus now, and uh, of course, Josh and Liv, our online campus pastors, doing an amazing job and reaching out to people. And uh, you know, the online campus is growing, and it's around the world. And so, I don't know about you, my friend, but I'm excited. It's great to be able to write a vision as we did last year, and now run with it and uh, see these things come to pass. Amen. And so, collectively, we got all these hooks and lines and nets out there. We got all kinds of things happening. You know, you got friends say, well, I don't want to come, you know, maybe they don't want to come to church. Well, get them to watch the church online. Hallelujah. And, uh, you know, it's just incredible, all these different ways that we can go fishing. But individually, 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 there's nothing like sharing Christ one-on-one -on -one with somebody. And I know some people struggle to bring up the subject, but, you know, I, I sometimes I just say to people, have you ever thought about, you know, who Jesus was? You know, just open up a question. You know, you ever thought about life after death? I mean, there's a good question. You know, there's lots of questions. Have you ever thought, does God exist? Well, what do you think about the Big Bang? You know, I mean, there's so many questions. You can just open up a conversation, particularly right now. People, I believe, are so open in relation to what's happening in the world today. And, of course, we've got people who are very good at it. People, you know, I, I won't mention a whole list of names, but, of course, one of them is Steph. Uh, Steph Armstrong, and uh, we played this clip, but it's such a great clip. We're going to play it again just to inspire us that, hey, you may not have such an outgoing personality, but the Bible says the righteous is bold as a lion. And so all of us can just, you know, reach out to somebody in the grocery store, or sitting on an airplane or somebody at work. And so check out uh, Steph's, Steph's testimony here. That's awesome. When God touches your heart in such a profound way like I knew God all my life, but when I nearly died after having Libby, I had such a revelation of God's goodness that you can't help but share God with everyone and just as you live your life. Our motivation as Christians, our drive should be that we should share Jesus because it's a real scary thing out there to think that there's so many people living their lives that don't know Him, they don't, they don't know He's their answer, but also they don't know about eternity. That's huge for me. I love just going out and looking for opportunities, saying that sometimes I don't feel like it either. And so that's, you've got to, we've got to always be mindful that it's never often a convenient moment when it's a God moment, right? So I remember walking on the beach and I think I was having kind of a hard day and I was telling God about it and I saw this family ahead of me and they had a little boy. I really felt the Holy Spirit say, talk to them, say hi, invite them to music box. So I'm thinking, all right, you know how you just could easily walk by? Just it's not embarrassing. You've got to actually sometimes break through that feeling in your heart that you don't want to share Jesus because you think, oh, they might think I'm weird or why would you do that? You know, why would you invite someone to church? So I just started talking to them and asked them who they are and found out they'd just come from England a few days earlier and got chatting and I just sort of said, hey, look, you know, I mean, you in the area, but we have at my church, we have this really cool thing you can bring them along to if you're looking for something and um, music box. And, um, and she said, yeah, I'd like to do that. Next thing, came and got saved at our church and is about to do Gateway, comes to our mums and bubs and um, just having had the opportunity just to um, be able to share Jesus with her has probably changed her whole family and I love that. I always actually am quite surprised when people say you're an evangelist because I don't really feel like I am. I feel like I'm just someone that loves God and lives my life for Him and He's our ultimate leader and example and if we're following Him we all need to share the good news. So if it's not quite your thing to reach out to people, just look at what, how your life looks to others. When we're in the world, are we standing out as Christians? Are we making choices that show that we love God? When someone's sick, are we going the extra mile? Are we following the Holy Spirit's little check on our heart? Like, 
talk to that person, um, buy that meal. I love that. And I think if you live like that, you actually have a really cool life. It's so amazing what God does. And I just love that um, I don't know what each day is going to bring and who I'm going to meet. And as Pastor Peter says to us, we've all got to live our lives as fishers of men because that's what we're called to do. It's what the Bible says. And that's what our hearts are motivated to do when we love God. This is our mission field right here, right where we live, our neighbours, our friends, sharing him with others. That it's making a difference for the eternity. And so that's my motivation. Isn't that a great clip? She's a great girl, obviously, but enough to say all of us can do something, you know. And uh, you may say, well, I can't speak like that. You can, but enough to say, why don't you just bake a cake for somebody? Go and mow a lawn for somebody. Just reach out and help somebody, you know. And maybe you're just standing in line in the grocery store or the, or the dairy and just, you know, buy them ice cream. I, the other day I had a, 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 a uh, with somebody and, and they were lining up. And I've just bought their kids, you know, a biscuit each, you know, and I, whatever it was in the cafe. And so you can do these kind of things, right? Uh, I want to encourage you. We just got printed these cards, all welcome to City Impact Church. And these are handout cards. Each campus have got their own card. And so these cards, I mean, even if you don't say anything, hey, can I give you one of these? <laughs> it's that simple. Uh, I mean, just inviting people to church, you know. I'm a great believer. You throw enough mud on the wall, some of it will stick. You might give out a thousand of these and one person gets saved. Praise the Lord. It's worth it. Amen. So just in closing, can I just encourage you? You know, there is no sin too big for God. What am I saying? There's nothing too hard for Him. I know the devil would get us to focus on the size of the task. When I think about 8 billion people in the world, we can be overcome, you know, or the size of the problem, you know, but God would have us focus not on the size of the problem, but the size of the opportunity. Hallelujah. The size of the promise. So God's nature, my friend, is to take what we have as we give it and multiply it. That's what being fruitful is all about, like I mentioned last week. And so if you want to be part of the vision, and if you want to even give to the vision, hallelujah. And that's part of going fishing as well. And I know this year we didn't take up a vision offering, and I'm not going to do a big drive for it today or anything like that. Once a year we normally come and down the front and we, we put it in, as you know, like our mission offering. We make a big deal of it. But uh, uh, because of COVID and because of, you know, the world, just as it is at the moment, I felt not to do that. But, you know, I know there are people who wanted to give to the vision. And maybe you still want to give and you haven't had that opportunity. Well, here's the envelope. Let's go fishing. And so right through our, our campuses, that's available for you to sow into this vision. What am I talking about? Well, hallelujah, the boats sometimes need repairing. The nets need repairing. The bait needs to be bought, right? We've got to keep going and keep growing. And so obviously, finance is a big part of it. And you can go fishing by sowing some finance into the vision of this. Let's go fishing. Praise the Lord. You know, City Impact Church simply exists to glorify God, to mature the saints, and to evangelize the world, to save souls, in other words. That's why we're here, friend. That's the reason we're here. Otherwise, you all might as well die and go to heaven, right? So let's go fishing in 2020. You know, to, to steal that line out of the movie Gladiator, well, Gladiator, Russell Crowe said, what we do in life echoes in eternity. In eternity. So let's be fruitful. Let's go forth and multiply. Let's not be cynical. Let's not, you know, be like that guy who said, well, I don't believe God can do it. I don't believe God can save that person. I don't believe revival can come to our nation. I don't, I don't think we should, you know, we've been talking about fishing for 38 years. Why, why are we still talking about it? I've heard it all before. Nobody's interested today. Let's not be like that. Why? Because in verse 19, it says this in our story, as we pick it back up, as I bring this to a close, then the royal officer answered the man of God and said, Now behold, if the Lord should make the windows in heaven, could this thing be? And the prophet said, Behold, you'll see it with your own eyes, but you shall not eat of it. And so it happened to him, for the people trampled on him at the gate, and he died. You know, cynical people, that's what happens. You know, leprosy, sin brings death. We need to get rid of sin. We need to turn our lives around, repent, give our lives to Christ. You know, I left out a piece of verse 9 in relation to the story, in relation to the lepers. And I'm just going to read it in closing, uh, uh, this uh, verse 9. Then they said to one another, the lepers, we're not doing right. This is a day of good news. I read that to you, right? And I read the following part. Therefore, come, let us tell the king's household. The point I left out was, but we are keeping silent. If we wait until the morning light, punishment will overtake us. 
Wow, wow, wow. I want you to think about that. I want you to think about what Jesus said about the lazy servant who buried his talent. I want you to think about what Jesus said about the sheep and the goats in the parable. He said to ones who thought they did, where were you when I needed food? Where were you when I needed clothing? Where were you when I was in prison? You never visited me and so forth. And he said, as much as you've done it to the least of my brethren, you've done it unto me. And so when I think about those things, this is exactly what's happening here. Jesus talks about the light, the morning light and so forth. And so I want to encourage you. Let's all be about the Father's business. Let's all be involved and let's go fishing. Let's all be about winning souls for Christ. This is why the church on the planet Earth is still here. Amen. And so we're going to close the service. Let's just bow our heads in a word of prayer. And the campus pastors will pick it up after this. Father, we want to thank you for the vision. We again thank you and pause for these 38 years, for the thousands thousands of souls that we have seen, uh, Lord, give their lives to Christ. What an honor it is. What a privilege it is for lives that you've touched. Change for eternity. Change for this world. And I pray this morning, Lord, in all the campuses, right throughout the nation and the nations, in Canada, in India, the Philippines, Tonga, Mexico, Lord, the states, I pray blessing. I pray, oh God, that you would touch people in the South Island, here in Auckland. Father, oh God, Lord, I pray that you would draw people to yourself. I give you praise today. I give you glory today. And I thank you so much that, Lord, all of us are called, Lord, to be disciples. As you said, Jesus, come follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. And so, oh God, we want to be involved in what you're doing on the earth today. I know, oh God, we live in amazing days. And, Lord, I believe for revival. I believe, Lord, for you to move by the power of your Spirit, that the whole earth will truly be covered with the glory of the Lord. So we give ourselves to you and commit ourselves to you in the wonderful name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us today.